The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and after three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the 12, and said to them, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God. Amen. Show of hands. How many of you have ever heard a so-called children's sermon? You know, the pastor calls up the kids. They become the center of attention. Well, actually, an object in a brown bag becomes the center of attention. An object lesson. Take today's gospel about greatness. I could have in the bag things that I could... try to impress you with, like this mask with an icon from Istanbul on it. Nerdy, probably, right? Well, or maybe a shaker from Cuba, a little better. Or possibly, if I really wanted to be cool, I would have a White Sox cap. Oh. Or, oh. You can see. Whoa. A mixed congregation, a couple couple blocks away from Wrigley Fields. Eventually, in a children's sermon, the pastor asks a question of all the kids, a question about the Bible story or the gospel. But the kids are usually on to it by then. Just answer Jesus, whatever the question. <laughs> Ironic that I'm talking about children's sermons in a church where we don't do them. Early on, Pastor Sevig and I decided that we would involve the children in the liturgy instead, receiving communion, gathering around the font for a baptism, carrying a star on a stick on Epiphany, a palm on Palm Sunday, bearing the Alleluia for Lent, serving as torchbearers. Now, since the pandemic, we've not seen as many kids in worship, but today probably is a record. It's been a huge loss for us. Back in the year 2000, we only had two kids. Now we have more than 100 if we were all here the same day. Their presence, a center of our attention, a sign of hope when so many churches are dying. No wonder every baptism for us is a sign of hope for the future. Now back to children's sermons. I've heard in some churches, the adults admit that they like the children's sermon better, (laughs) that it's shorter and peppier than the long, boring adult sermon. I'm doing my best today to remedy that. (laughs) Maybe that's why our former Bishop Wayne Miller began most of his adult sermons, even for pastors when we were gathered, with an object that he would pull out of his brown bag to get our attention, to be the center of attention. When he preached on Ephatha, be opened, that we heard and read a couple weeks ago, he had things hard to open, like pickle jars, or childproof medicine bottles, or remember those shrink-wrapped CDs? They were terrible, right? So when he preached on the dry bones in Ezekiel, he had a chicken boil down so much that the skeleton just fell apart. Or when he talked about shaking up the spirit within us, 
he would have some pop. Now, now I only need... <laughs> Now, I only need um, one of these, and I know this pastor likes it. <laughs> but of course, you know, in some churches, the pastor hands out things at the end of the service. We'll see what will happen. But on this certain sermon where he talked about shaking up the spirit in us, he would do this. And how I would love <laughs> to let this everywhere right now. Well, Jesus, as an object lesson in today's gospel, it's not a sermon for children. It's like there was a child in the brown bag, and he sets the child in the midst of the disciples to make a point about true greatness and servanthood. Just before that, the disciples had been squabbling over who was the greatest, who was the center of attention, who was the star disciple, who was Jesus' favorite. Now, the overachievers were craving the five-star reviews on greatestdisciple.jc. But in Mark's gospel, the disciples are a bit dense, let's say. They don't seem to get it. Jesus had told them the somber news that suffering and death and the cross await him. But when the disciples think of the Messiah, they imagine everyone wearing caps, not with the white socks on them, but M-I-G-A, make Israel great again. They had been conditioned to think the Messiah would come with military might, be an aggressive, strong ruler, and kick butt, at least the Romans. But the ways of Jesus could not be further from that. Humility, service, death for the sake of others, really? Well, what about us? We're conditioned to believe that winning is everything. Being the best, being the cutest, being the greatest, being the richest. If only the Bible gave support for M-I-G-A or M-A-G-A. But along comes Jesus. If you want to be first, you must be servant and last. Isn't that for losers? Isn't that for wimps? It's the kind of welcome you give, Jesus says. James adds, let your good life show what kind of person you are. Are you consumed with selfish ambition, with cravings, with conflicts, with envy, with boasting? Or do you seek a deeper wisdom, being at peace within yourself? So Jesus uses a child as an object lesson. Whoever welcomes a child welcomes me. That's easy, right? We love kids. We love babies. They become the center of our attention. They're cute and adorable until they become sassy and selfish, right? Or become teenagers. Remember, in Jesus' day, children were more prone to be discarded than spoiled. Holy Trinity is proud of its welcome statement because Christ welcomes us. We welcome one another, whatever our religious or spiritual backgrounds, how we feel about church or organized religion, whatever the color of our skin, whoever we love or marry, our, agen our gender identity, whether we like to be the center of attention or whether we turn red when someone calls on us at a big party or in a class, whether we're up in years or an infant, a child, or yes, a wonderful teenager. It's in baptism where God welcomes both adults and children, a sign of God's unconditional welcome, a welcome signified by water, by oil, by candle, and by parents and sponsors and grandparents, and yes, you, the assembly, who also makes promises this day. Baptisms 
are moving in this congregation. But wait, they are radical too. We are initiating our children into a counter-cultural way of life. We are committing ourselves together to a different kind of greatness, one that finds its purpose in serving others, one that sees the face of God in those the world excludes, one that acknowledges that life is full of heartache and loss and suffering, and one that stands with others in their pain or grief. Dear church, let welcome be your song. Welcome the child within you. Let yourself be curious. Be open to play. Be open to mysteries. Don't need all the answers. Be open to people, places, experiences that stretch your minds, stretch your hearts. Though we think of ourselves as the center of the world, Dip your hand in the font, eat the bread and wine of this table, and turn your eyes on others in need, or estranged, or living with hunger, or facing discrimination because of race or religion, or fearful because of who they are or who they love, as we will sing in the next hymn. May they become the center of our attention. Dear people of God, may the waters of baptism and the grace of God shake you up this day. Give you some fizz for your faith, some fervor to your living, some passion to your serving. As we will sing in a moment, Oh, may our hearts and minds be opened. May the church doors be flung open wide. And may there be room for everyone inside this place. For in God there is a welcome. May that welcome be our song and the center of our attention. Amen.